Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another one of our live episodes of Viewers Pulse. And I'm your host for the evening, Junaid Da. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to take this opportunity and thank you all for tuning in. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a fruitful, a beneficial program for us all. Brothers and sisters, we are coming to you live on your favorite channel, Huda TV. And we have an hour together, and this hour here is for us to communicate our ideas, our suggestions, ways that we can improve, ways that we can make changes and progress positively and together. Brothers and sisters, we have an hour together and we are live, so our lines are open and we do appreciate your comments and your thoughts and your suggestions. Viewers Pulse effectively has two main aims. The first of those aims is to review the previous week's events. What did we do last week? And what kind of programs did we produce? And we have a look at some of the highlights, some of the moments from last week where we had lots of feedback or we had people making comments. Furthermore, we look into the upcoming events where Ramadan is just around the corner. <coughs> so we want to look at Ramadan and look at the events that are going to come uh, during Ramadan. Furthermore, brothers and sisters, we also want to take your suggestions and your comments. It's your views that really add value to this channel and it's your suggestions that really make a change or make a difference in our lives and those who are watching. So, brothers and sisters, I'd like to welcome you to our program today on Viewers Pulse and I would like to encourage you all to get close to your phones and to participate in our program and really uh, we want to hear from you greatly. Uh, before we go into looking at the different ways in which you can communicate with us, I want to gently remind you all that our lines are open and the question of the week is still open. So all of you have the opportunity to take away the prize and be the winner of the week. Last week, I put a question to you all which, subhanAllah, over our Facebook page, we've had such a positive response with so many people responding to this question and we are and people are still responding as we are speaking but now I want to open the lines and let you call us and give us your questions on air so the question was who is known as Tarjuman al-Quran so there's a particular person who has given this name as Tarjuman al-Quran who is this person the lines are open so please do call us and our number is running across the screen brothers and sisters so please do pick up your phones and do call us if the numbers do begin with the zero zero two that's the code for those who are outside of Egypt if you're inside of Egypt you do not need to use the code so please I encourage you positively to pick up your phones and to get in contact with us here and the first person to call will be the winner of the week so let's see who's going to take the prize this week brothers and sisters there are a number of different ways in which you can communicate your ideas, your thoughts, your feedback, and even positive uh, criticisms. And the first of those, as we've just mentioned, is via phone. The second method of communication is via email. And brothers and sisters, I strongly encourage you to email us. We do uh, read all of your emails, and we do address the emails to the relevant department. If it's a question, Islamic question, we direct that to our Sheikh Muhammad Salah. If it's a question relating to da'wah, we have people there who are working uh, to provide solutions for those. And if it's a general question, we have uh, people qualified to answer your questions in each department. So please do get active on email, and our email address is pulse at huda.tv. So please do email us any of your concerns, any of your questions. I have a list of your emails in front of me. And inshallah ta'ala, in due course, we will go through them and try to address some of the issues that you have raised. Uh, brothers and sisters, another mode of communication is via our Facebook page. And our address is uh, Huda TV. And alhamdulillah, our likes are increasing every single day. And it gives me great pleasure. Uh, to announce to everybody that we are reaching closer and closer to a quarter of a million likes. That's 250,000 likes. Uh, mashallah, it gives us great pleasure to see those numbers go up. It shows us that you are benefiting and you are enjoying uh, the work that Huda TV produces. So, brothers and sisters, please continue to like our page and please continue to invite others also 
uh, to like this beautiful page, this beautiful Islamic channel that delivers to you free Islamic knowledge 24 hours of the day, seven uh, days a week. Do do that. And also, don't forget, brothers and sisters, that it's not just a matter of likes. It's a matter of da'wah, that we are an Islamic channel. We are calling people to the authentic teachings of Islam. And by you partaking in this, in this environment or this da'wah, you are effectively doing uh, da'wah at the same time. And don't forget that the Prophet Sallallahu he said that the person who invites a person to good will get the same reward. So you, by liking a person or by inviting a person to our Facebook page or our channel or any of, uh, of our means of uh, modes of communication, you will get a similar reward to it. And we have seen in our programs previously how, subhanAllah, people have actually embraced Islam by watching programs from Huda TV. So this is our aim, brothers and sisters, all of us, uh, you know, here as presenters or, or people working behind the cameras and you as viewers, is to spread Islam everywhere, fast and wide. So please do help us in achieving this glorious uh, goal. Brothers and sisters, furthermore, our Facebook page is very colorful and is full of Islamic reminders. You will see uh, a team there is dedicated in uploading reminders producing to you important information that will help you in your daily lives. So do take benefit from that. Furthermore, you have links to our other programs or live programs and recorded programs. You can move over to Huda Tonight where you see live programs. You can go to the gardens of the pious and, uh, and look at the, the teachings there by Muhammad Salah. And it all links uh, together from the main page, which is Huda TV. So please do use the page. And one of the main functions of this page is that it will link you to our official Huda TV webpage. And that's extremely important that you visit this page and have a look at what is going on uh, with uh, this beautiful Islamic channel. On this page, you will get to see all of our programs and they'll be listed there alongside airing time so you can see which programs you are able to see and, and you can uh, work your schedule accordingly. So you do take advantage of that. Secondly, you'll get an introduction or a background into the scholars or the mashaykh that are involved in Huda TV. Those in front of the camera, and those also behind the camera who support us with the dua and with their advices. And you also get to see some information about the presenters, what they do behind the camera and what other activities they're involved in. Also their back and what did they study and what are they studying at the present. So please do go to our official website and please uh, do enjoy all the different things that are there and you will see lots and lots of benefit. Brothers and sisters, also you can also subscribe to our Twitter account and our address is Huda TV channel. Now, I strongly encourage you to get active and subscribe with the Twitter account. Why do I say that? Because our Twitter account is directly linked to our Facebook page. So whenever there's something new on our Facebook page, a new event or a new program or an announcement, you will get an immediate update on your Twitter and you will see or you see it on your phone or on your tabs or whatever instrument you're using, you will see it immediately and you can keep up to date uh, with Huda TV and that's extremely important to do so. So please do subscribe uh, uh, to our uh, Twitter page. And also, brothers and sisters, I want to strongly encourage you today to get involved with our YouTube page, and our address is youtube.com forward slash Huda TV. Now, why do I put such a strong emphasis on this particular page? It's because we are an Islamic TV channel. So you can see there on our page that you are able to live stream all of our programs 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. And all you have to do in the comfort of your chair is to sit back and just press the live stream button and you will see everything there coming to you straight into your houses. So brothers and sisters, please do that and please also subscribe uh, to our channel. Furthermore, our YouTube page does consist, consist of all of our programs, previous programs, and you can search through them. The archive is vast. You can go through them via topic or via date. You have all the options there. And don't forget one important thing. When you are on the YouTube page, when you are watching the programs, there is a healthy discussion taking place and you can always give your feedback and discuss with other viewers what you are watching and how you feel about the subject that's being discussed. So there's an open platform there for discussion. So do take advantage uh, of that at the same time. Brothers and sisters, that does bring me to our last mode of communication and that is Skype. Our Skype account is Huda underscore 
TV as is running across the screens and I encourage you uh, to sign up with us on Skype and also you can message us there or you can give us a call via, via voice and we will take your calls and we'll try our best to address all your concerns especially today uh, brother sister some people uh, may feel easier to pick up the phones and call us and speak to us in the studio but at the same time you can also go onto Skype which is free and you can call us on that same address and your call will be directed straight uh, into the studio and I will inshallah ta'ala welcome uh, your call, your question or your comment to the best of my ability. So please do get onto Skype at the same time. There are so many different modes, subhanAllah, there's no excuse not to be involved. So brothers and sisters, please let's get active and let's do some da'wah and do some work and get engaged as a community. Brothers and sisters, I would like to give you some reminders and some updates of what's going on and what is going to happen. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, the countdown for Ramadan has begun. And we have a number of different programs that we are hoping to produce. Some of these programs are based around uh, the Quran. So you'll see programs discussing the recitation of uh, the Quran. And furthermore, uh, brothers and sisters, I want to use this opportunity to ask you, I mean, it's your channel. What would you like to see in Ramadan? Would you like to see a new program? I mean, Ramadan is the month of Quran. So would you like to see more Quranic recitation? Would you like to see more tafsir programs? And one such uh, example is uh, the tafsir program which is currently running on our channel uh, with the tafsir of Surah Yusuf by uh, Dr. Yasir Qadi. And you can see that tafsir which is ongoing. Would you like to see more programs like this? And this particular program, inshallah ta'ala, when we come back from our break, we will have a beautiful report giving an insight into this program and you will see exactly what uh, we are discussing and what we are talking about. So really, brothers and sisters, the lines are open and our emails are there and we have people sitting there welcoming your, uh, your thoughts. Please do tell us, what do you want to see in Ramadan? Do you have anything particular in mind? Quran program, hadith program, health and fitness program. Many people in Ramadan tend to forget the importance of our health. We're not just fasting just purely for the fast, but we're also trying to better our health at the same time. So would you like to see a health and fitness program? Brothers and sisters, it's your choice, it's your opportunity. Please do tell us what you would like to see. Uh, brothers and sisters, furthermore, when we come back from the break, we will have uh, three main reports which we will discuss collectively. Uh, the first of that will be by Dr. Yasa Qadi talking about his beautiful program uh, or a clip into his program, which is the tafsir of Surah Yusuf. We'll have another report talking about the power of dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our final report will be discussing issues relating uh, to the family. So please do stay tuned and watch those programs with me here and also give me your uh, comments. Brothers and sisters, as promised, we do have your emails in front of me and I'm going to go through some of them and try to address them here live in the studio. Our first email comes from Sister Aisha Muhammad and she writes an email all the way from Nigeria and she writes, Assalamu alaikum brother Junaid. I stay in Nigeria and I always try to call with the TV but I keep on getting the response that the lines uh, do not exist. Please help me uh, and ask my fellow Nigerians how they contact you. I use MTN and Zane lines. So. Sister Aisha, uh, you're having some problems there calling us, um, but I can assure you that our numbers that do run across the screen that you see um, are working on those lines are open and we've had many people call us from Nigeria, but uh, I'm not too sure how MTN and Zane lines actually work. If there is any uh, other person, uh, somebody from Nigeria who, who understands the system there, please call us and help us so we can try to address Sister Aisha's problem there because our lines are working but I'm, I'm sure there is some kind of problem, so we'll try to resolve that together. Our second email comes from Kareem Muhammad, and he says, Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to invite Huda to my brother's wedding. He's going to marry to a Bulgarian woman who reverted to Islam about a month ago. MashaAllah, brother Kareem Muhammad is inviting the whole Huda team to his wedding. I don't think he understands how many of us there are, and he's going to have to prepare lots and lots of food. But mashallah, we thank you very much, Brother Kareem Muhammad. We are more than welcome and willing to come to your brother's uh, wedding. Just give us the information, and inshallah ta'ala, we will try our best to come. Thank you very much for that uh, warm and welcoming invitation. Okay, we have another email. Our third email comes from M. A. Amin Khan. And this brother is from Bangladesh, and he writes, 
Assalamu alaikum. What is the meaning of Huda? Nice question. So here, the brother asked the meaning of the word Huda. The word Huda literally, it's, it's an Arabic word, and it literally means guidance. And as you see across your screens, we are, it's a light in every home. So Huda is a light in every home. The literal translation is guidance, and we chose this name because we hope to be a, a form of guidance. And we try to enter into everybody's house and try to teach people the correct teachings of Islam. So it's all revolved uh, around the meaning of guidance. So we thank you, Brother Amin, for your fantastic email. So please do continue, brothers and sisters, to engage with us and ask us any kind of questions uh, that you have. Our final email comes from uh, Brother Abdi Abdillah. And he writes an email. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question that is troubling me a lot. I am divorced with my ex-wife. After that, uh, we ended up having sex and she became pregnant. I don't know what to do. Please tell me what I shall do about this. Please, I need your reply very badly. So here the brother is asking, uh, it's a fiqhi question, so inshallah ta'ala this uh, requires a response from Sheikh Muhammad Salah and it will be addressed uh, either on his program or on his website. Brahma sisters, if you do have fiqh questions, you can address them live on our program Ask Huda or you can address them uh, on Sheikh Muhammad Salah's own personal Facebook page which he is more than willing to answer uh, and address your problems. But Brahma sisters, this is a, an, important, an important point we can take out of this question uh, is uh, firstly, the importance of understanding the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. The topic of talaq is a very detailed and complex matter. So maybe a person thinks that he's divorced his wife, but he's not really divorced. Or maybe a person thinks he's living in a healthy relationship, but maybe he's actually divorced. So these things require study and require an understanding because there is two types of of, of divorce, there's one where you can take back your wife, and there's one where you cannot take back your wife. So we, these discussions uh, need to be understood uh, with correct uh, knowledge. And I encourage brothers and sisters, those who are married and those who are getting married, to really understand and study these topics so that you don't fall uh, into such mistakes. So brothers and sisters, I thank you very much for uh, all of your emails. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all in our difficulties or uh, in the mistakes that we make we are human and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving as long as we turn to Allah with sincerity and we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but of course every action does have a reaction so we definitely need to understand uh, these subjects properly brothers and sisters I want to remind you again of the question of the week before uh, we go to a break and then when we come back from the break inshallah ta'ala I, I, I will give you uh, some of the answers to the question. So I want to leave the lines open still. Okay, the question is, who is Tarjuman al-Qur'an? Who did the Prophet Sallallahu call, uh, or was given the nickname, sorry, of Tarjuman al-Qur'an? So brothers and sisters, we're going to take a very short break, and then when we get back from the break, we're going to go through these answers, and hopefully there will be somebody there with uh, the correct answer and take away the title winner of the week. So brothers and sisters, take a very short break here, and then we'll come back in just a few moments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh Allah, to you belong. All praise. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and all that is within them. Um, Sister Amina is asking, is it true that you can see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dream? The answer is yes. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an authentic hadith, he said, Man ra'ani fil manam faqad ra'ani, fa inna shaytana la yatamathalu bi. After the soul departs the body, it makes its journey 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it was righteous so it will be given permission to enter into the heavens but if the soul was wicked no إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Whosoever associates someone in worship with Allah, even if it is me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jannah haram and lawful for that person. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. So let me stray. Please come away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. He actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmad. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Go ahead. Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives? Would you say that's okay, a reason? Absolutely, that? that's true. Some yes. people just resort to drug as the last option because they they get themselves stirred out and they're instead of depression but they don't know where to turn for help. What's the wisdom behind Islam prohibiting drugs? Uh, Islam, you know, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. you no. Know, uh, all the Islamic rulings in general, they are just prescribed for preserving two main things. The religion, mm -hmm. which is spirituality, and the worldly or the mundane things, which is, you know, the, the soul, human soul. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away, away from, from it. it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, after a very short break here on Viewers Pulse. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to welcome you back and I'd like to announce to you that I'm going to go through some of the answers that you gave to the question, but our lines are still open, so please do call us. If you know the answer, then do call us. Even though I'm reading out the answers, please do call us and take away the title of Winner of the Week. So, uh, let me go through some of your answers. We asked the question, who is Tarjuman al-Quran? And we had mashallah, a very, very positive response. And I'm very happy to say that. And I'll read to you some of the names and some of the answers that were given to us. First and foremost, we have Sister uh, Gigi Imara Muslima. She responds uh, with the answer, Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is the correct answer. Well done, sister. That is the correct answer. And uh, then we have Um Aisha Gawan Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is also uh, the correct answer. Well done, Um Aisha. And we have uh, uh, Brother Idris, and he says Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Oh, that's not the right answer, but it's very close, but it's not the accurate uh, answer. And then also we have uh, Hani uh, Zayed, who said Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is correct. Well done. And we have Sister. Uh, Naima Ismail Ahmed who said Abdullah ibn Abbas which is also correct and we have brother Ahmed uh, al, uh, he says Abdullah ibn Abbas which is also correct well done and we have Iman al uh, Rashi Abdullah ibn Abbas which is also correct well done and our final uh, response here is brother Hisham Saad and he says Abdullah ibn Abbas so well done brothers and sisters 
for all those who emailed us with the correct answers and it was Abdullah ibn Abbas. So excellent, well done. So we see people are doing their homework. People are keeping in touch and are researching and understanding uh, these questions. So well done all of you. Your names will be put up as you saw on your screens on our Facebook page. So well done every person there. And I will give you the question of this week towards the end of the program. So please do stay tuned. And it's a very interesting question actually. So don't miss uh, the question. Brothers and sisters, I want to move over now and have a look at some of our reports that we've prepared for you uh, from our ongoing uh, programs. From amongst them, the very first is from our respected beloved Sheikh uh, Yasser Qadi, who has a beautiful tafsir of Surah Yusuf. And on this note, I want to uh, inform all of you, brothers and sisters, that next week, inshallah ta'ala, we will have a live phone call uh, with uh, brother uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi and we'll get to hear from him directly so please don't miss that opportunity and we can also address him with any questions that we have so do put those questions forward. So the report is talking about a, dis uh, a look into the understanding of Surah Yusuf. Let's have a look at this report and then we'll have some comments from myself and hopefully uh, from yourselves too. So let's have a look at this report. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about dreams and dream interpretation because dreams is a constant theme of Surah Yusuf. We, the Surah starts with a dream and we see the dream of the people in the prison. Uh, we see the dream of the king himself. And then the end of the Surah, we see the conclusion and the interpretation of the dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. As we said, dreams are of three types. One of them is the dream that yourself imagines, your soul imagines. Another is from shaitan. And the ministers accused the, the king of seeing one of these types of dreams. You are seeing jumbled up, messed up uh, nightmares from shaitan. And the third type we call it ru'ya, which means from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I want to clarify in, in, in a few minutes is that the concept of dream interpretation, dream interpretation is a blessing that Allah gives to His chosen servants. People are blessed with this knowledge. It is not something that you can look up in an encyclopedia or a book. It is very common to find books in the marketplace that say how to interpret dreams or the dictionary of dreams. And there is a famous fabricated book that is attributed to a great scholar by the name of uh, Muhammad ibn Sirin. And they say this is the dictionary of interpretations of dreams by Muhammad ibn Sirin. This book is in fact a fabrication. Muhammad ibn Sirin was a great scholar. He was a student of Abu Huraira and he was a dream interpreter, but he never wrote a book. Actually, a charlatan, a fakester, a trickster, many centuries later, wanted to make money by selling this book. So he put dream interpretation by Ibn Sirin. And it wasn't by Ibn Sirin. He just wanted to mass produce this book to get some income and some fame from it. The reality is that this book and all books, in fact, that claim to tell you how to interpret dreams, these books are not authentic. You do not learn how to interpret dreams. Actually, this is a science that Allah blesses you with. Now, I am not denying that there are some hadith and some indications that you can get from uh, the Quran and the Sunnah of how to interpret dreams. For example, a fat cow might signify uh, a fruitful year. But what I'm trying to stress here, yes, there are a few such things that we find in the Quran and Sunnah. But what I'm trying to stress here, overall, the science of dream interpretation is a symbolic science that Allah blesses people with. And it is relative, the dream and the interpretation of the dream is relative to the person who saw it and the culture that he or she is living in. So for example, to see a certain animal living in one part of the world might signify one thing. To see the same animal, another person in another part of the world sees it, it might signify something totally different because the symbolism will be related to the culture you're living in. Similarly, the same symbol might mean something different in one century than it does in another century. So the very concept of having a book of dream interpretations doesn't make any sense. Rather, as we said, dream interpretation is a science that Allah Azza wa Jal blesses the chosen people with. How does a person get this knowledge? By being pious and righteous. As simple as that. This is one of the very few sciences in Islam that is not an academic science. You don't study it. The majority of sciences in Islam can be studied. We study fiqh, we study Quran, we study hadith. 
But dream interpretation, we can only study a little bit of it, very little bit of it. You would not be able to write a large volume on dream interpretation. Rather, this is a blessing from Allah. So I advise my viewers to beware and be cautious, not just of the books that are on the marketplace, but also of those people who think that they can interpret dreams and you find them all the time coming. Many times you find them on satellite channels or you find them sometimes uh, uh, you can call them up and they'll ask you for some money or you go to them and they'll ask you for some money and they pretend to interpret dreams. Be careful. I'm not saying all of them are false. Allah knows best. But for sure, many of these people are just trying to make a business out of it by milking your money out. So remember, dream interpretation is a blessing from Allah. If you do see an interesting dream that you want to get interpreted, find out from the people of your village, of your town, of your city, who are the righteous and pious people. And only tell the righteous and pious people of your dreams. Do not announce it in public because the Prophet ﷺ clearly told us that when you see a good dream, only tell it to the people whom you trust, whom you confide in. So go to the local, pious, God-fearing ulama of your locality and confide to them and ask them uh, what is the interpretation of the dream. So, inshaAllah ta'ala, then you will get the dream interpreted properly. <laughs>so this is to get our attention. You know, shouldn't I be telling you something? Don't you want to hear this? What am I going to tell you? Shall I not tell you? Shall I not tell you about bi khayri a'malikum? Shall I not tell you about the best single action that you can do? Think of all of the actions that you can do in Islam. Think of all of the things that you do that are worthy in Islam, all of the beautiful facets of Islam, being good to your parents, giving charity, being kind to others, uh, sort of 
being a positive impact on people, uh, you know, smiling at people, having good manners with people, your prayer, your fasting, your hajj, shall I not tell you? Bi amalikum, the best of your deeds. The best of your deeds, not only the best of your deeds, but wa inda malikikum. The most pure of those deeds to Allah Azza wa Jal, to your sovereign, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the king of kings and the sovereign of all sovereigns, who is subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, the, the supreme, the sovereign, the ruler, the lord of the heavens and the earth. Shall I not tell you of the most pure of your deeds to Allah? So it is the best of deeds, what is going to come, what the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about, it is the best of deeds, and it is the most pure of deeds to Allah. Not only that, وَأَرْفَعُهَا The highest of them fi darajatikum. The highest of them in, in, in levels. The highest of them in levels. The one that will take you to the highest level. The one that has the greatest impact on the level that you reach in paradise. Not only that, وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِنْفَاقِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرِقِ Better for you than spending gold and silver in the cause of Allah. How wonderful is sadaqah? We hear that hadith of sadaqah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, takes your sadaqah and manipulates and, 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 and makes it bigger and bigger and lets it grow and grow and grow until it reaches the size of a mountain and you started with only a date. You started with a date, Allah made it into a mountain. And there is something that is better for you than giving gold and silver in the way of Allah. And that doesn't say that we shouldn't give gold and silver in the way of Allah, but simply that this deed in the scale of things, in the scheme of things, is even better than that. وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَن تَلْقَوْ عَدُوَّكُمْ Better for you than for you to meet your enemy. فَتَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَهُمْ وَيَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَكُمْ And you strike their necks and they strike your necks. It's better for you than this. And we know how much the companions used to love to defend Islam, to defend the rights of the weak and the needy, to strive in the cause of Allah, to go out and to you know, be a responsible or have responsibility for Islam to spread even further in the world, to defend the rights of the meek and the oppressed. And so they, they, they longed for this, they longed to be able to defend Islam, they longed to be able to to, uh, to make up for uh, those, the suffering that they had suffered in the time of Makkah. They were in Medina. Allah gave them the permission to go and to, uh, to fight as part of the Muslim army. And they loved this deed. But the Prophet ﷺ said, don't even think that this deed is the best. I can tell you something that is not only better than giving sadaqah for the sake of Allah, but it's better for you than when you meet your enemy on the battlefield. And you're striking at each other, you're seeking martyrdom, you're seeking to uh, cause a loss to your enemy, you're seeking to defend the rights of the poor and the needy and to be able to establish peace on the earth. You're seeking to do this, it's even better than that. Even better than that. They said, Bala ya Rasulullah. Bala ya Rasulullah. Oh yes, O Messenger of Allah, tell us what is this deed. And what did he say? Faqala, he said, Zikrullah. He said, it is the remembrance of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, after watching a very short report there talking about the importance of zikr. Now, when we say the word dhikr, the word literally means the remembrance. And we are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our beloved Shaykh there, Muhammad Hanbal, he gives us some very important advice there and reminds us how the Prophet sallallahu said that the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said the most purest of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that of remembering him himself. Um, at the same time, brothers and sisters, I'd like to take this point and remind all of us, myself first and foremost, is that we should continue with our daily adhkar, those that the Prophet has prescribed. So he has given us certain recitations for the morning and certain recitations for the evening. We should do this constantly and not uh, to not become lazy in those things. Also, we have certain adhkar that we do at certain times of the day and at certain instances. So if you're eating, you're going to say, Bismillah, and you eat with your right hand. 
If you're going to enter the bathroom, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khaba'ith. You go inside, and when you are leaving, you will say, ghufranik. So you have all of these different afkar, which we are uh, encouraged to learn and to memorize. And you will find that many of our teachers and, and the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu actually indicate and signify to us that these afkar, they actually protect you from evil. Be that from the shayateen, so if you're going to go into the bathroom, you'll seek protection from the shayateen of the bathroom. And if you're, going to, uh, if you're going to be intimate with your wife, for example, you can also uh, make a dhikr there and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep the shaytan away from the two of you. And you find generally that the afkar that you do in the morning and in the evening, they'll protect you from any kind of black magic or evil eye, uh, or as they say, envy or anything like that. And we know these kind of problems are... Uh, 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 rampant in our societies where people uh, maybe not intentionally but they look at the person and you will see that they will say he has been given the eye and the person will deteriorate in his health or in any other form so brothers and sisters please do take uh, brother or oh, Sheikh Muhammad Hanbal's advice there of doing the afkar and we know that these afkar are extremely important and we should not become lazy and as a matter of fact you can actually get a very small booklet that you can put inside your pockets and you can carry it around and uh, uh, you know I, I remember that one of my dear friends who, who had uh, come to Islam or revert to Islam he would carry this book with him uh, wherever he went and he had a miswak and this book in this pocket all the time and he would be constantly reading wherever he entered a place or wherever he went so brother and sister please do remember to make your afghards is extremely important uh, brother and sisters we do have another report it's our third report and in this report we're going to have a look at a very important social topic and this topic is discussing family issues and uh, in this day and age, we have a number of challenges facing us all across the globe, uh, uh, family-related issues, be that with your husband or your wife or your children. So please uh, do, let's, uh, do pay attention to this report. In particular, uh, we hear many people complaining about smoking, about the husband has taken up the habit of smoking and how this is affecting the marriage and how this is also affecting the health of the children and the environment in which somebody is living. So let's have a look at this report and the presenter is Brother Malik. I'm, uh, I'm sure everybody remembers our beloved presenter Malik who talks about uh, the issue of smoking in uh, family related affairs. So let's have a look at this report and then we will come back. <laughs> Uh, what about the, the wealth that people waste on this for the elitist? I mean, you have to have no kind of conscience. It's just throw away money, which money should be used in a positive way, you know, to benefit yourself and others. Mm. Uh, you know, and these people will just buy cigarette, packs of cigarettes after pack of cigarettes with total disregard of Allah because he's smoking with his family, his responsibilities, because he's just throwing the money away. Mm. Uh, isn't Allah going to question this person? What did you do with your money? Yeah, of course. Uh, we're all going to be questioned about where we got our money and where we spent it. Right. Um, so that's... It's very, very crucial, yeah. and like we mentioned before, because the prices of cigarettes are so low, maybe the person doesn't take into consideration what he's actually investing his money in. He's right. going to be asked, you know, cigarettes are 50p or yeah. <laughs> a couple Whatever. of jenay, right. but that's all going to add up, add up, add up, and maybe Certainly. in a day of judgment it's going to come. You spent 1,000 jenay on yeah, cigarettes. This amount of your wealth. And yeah, X amount. Of, and yeah. How about time? time. Productivity. How yeah. much time do you spend? You know, these guys, look... Uh, most of them, you won't find them praying. So here we go. Allah has ordained, ordained on us to pray five times a day, okay? But this is too difficult. But there are 20 cigarettes in a pack, and this person can smoke 20 or more. Yeah. I know people that smoke two packs a day. So this person can take, a, say, for example, excuse me, 20 packs a day, or 20 cigarettes a day. But he can't make time for Allah five times a day? I mean, isn't that incredible? Yeah, it's incredible. And also, he can quit. A lot of them, they are quitting, you know, during the Ramadan. Oh, if he, If he can quit during the the, the, the day he yeah. can quit du during the um, night so it's like mm. just a will and also you know regarding you know this uh, you know wasting money you know for example, if i took like this money like if i burn this you know this is what's the happening. people they will say i'm crazy you know yeah, yeah. the malik will say this is crazy but right. if the people are smoking you know they are burning money <laughs> yeah you know? yeah but another way so yeah. i maybe i will be crazy one uh, a couple of moments you know but yeah. he's crazy the whole the of his life you know because he's like burning money you know? yeah he's throwing the money away throwing the I, money. I i don't understand it the culture behind it i i think it we, we should educate ourselves and advise our brothers and sisters not to do it in, in ramadan especially you know i even to, to be honest with you when i saw people breaking their fast with a cigarette it made me sad but then when i saw people smoking in the day with a cigarette which you see often 
It's like, come on, you guys. I mean, even a little girl, a schoolgirl can fast. and uh, can fast. She has the strength to fast. But you're a grown man, and you can't sm stop smoking cigarettes just for the daylight hours, as if it's permissible at night and, and impermissible during the day, Ramadan. It's always impermissible. I mean, mm -hmm. but the fact that they can't just stop for this time. I mean, so I, I told my, a good friend of mine, okay, I gave him this piece of advice. I said, look, are you the servant of Allah? Are you the servant of these cigarettes? Because... That's the whole point, right? Your, 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 op, your life is operated around this cigarette when you take a break, when you go buy it. So you can't break your addiction to this? This is, that means you're, you're a slave to it. Mm. Uh, what do you think about this? If you can't break your addiction to it, then you're a slave to it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, and this is one of the biggest problems that cigarettes have. We become, addict, we become addicted to it. You right. wake up, you need to have a cigarette. You, you want to socialize with your friends, you have to have a cigarette. You want to watch a football match or whatever, right. basketball, you have to have a cigarette. Right. And it just accompanies everything that you do. And the effects that it has on your body is very bad. The, the smoker, the first time, is coughing. He's coughing. Yeah. He's, he's, all Terrible. of these things. And then you know that your body's getting worse when you're smoking and there's nothing, yeah. nothing happening Thank to you. you. It means that your body has, has got worse. Yeah. And when a person quits smoking and they stop they start coughing up all this nasty phlegm yeah. and all this stuff. So you're just harming your body. And you, I mean, do you actually know the, the effects that it's having on you? I mean, yeah, you need certainly. to really look into it. But definitely the habits of not being able to give it up, it's just a sign that it's not for you. It's not yeah. right. Yeah. And I try also not to sit with smokers, you know. Yeah. Although it's so difficult, I try to excuse myself. And so you give them a message that says, look, I, I don't want to be around this uh, bad thing that you're mm -hmm. engaging in. Also... You know, I, this drives me crazy. You know, I'm not a sheikh, but we heard Dr. Muhammad Sallallahu say on the program, the simple hadith that says, you know, la dalara wa la dirar, so don't harm yourself, don't harm me. So you are harming other people, mm. not just yourself. So th this shows me a total disregard for, like, human life. Okay, you want to harm yourself, that's one thing, although it's wrong. But now you're harming me and other bystanders. So, I mean, I think this is something to consider also, isn't it, brother? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, after watching a short report talking about smoking. Now, brothers and sisters, it's really important to, to take note of some of the lessons uh, that Brother Malik was mentioning there. And it was great to see Brother Malik. MashaAllah, we, we haven't seen him in a long time. If he's watching, we'll give you a uh, big salam, brother. We pray you are doing well. Um, one important point to note about smoking, the price of a box of cigarettes Let's, let's take it, for example, uh, in London, which I'm aware of. A, a box of cigarettes of 20 will cost you roughly five English pounds, which is about, you're looking at about eight dollars or in, in Egyptian pounds, that would be maybe 50. Now, we understand from research that many of the people across the world are living in severe poverty. And it is reported that many of them actually live on less than one dollar a day. And that's the money they use to eat and to drink with. And you, as I mean, the person who is smoking, he will then go and pay this money, these 50 or 60 or whatever amount they pay, uh, and feed their habits when there are people who are clearly suffering and not even able to eat or drink. So, brothers and sisters, please, uh, those of you who are smoking, do think about others and do think about the money that you are just throwing away. Uh, furthermore, brothers and sisters, I want to take, make another note about smoking, uh, and that is, uh, have you ever noticed that uh, when you are praying, you can always tell when a smoker enters. And you're praying and the person next to you who smokes, you can smell it. I, am I right or am I wrong? You can smell the smoke and it is sometimes or very often uh, it is uh, off-putting. So here it's another note in the Prophet he, he gave, uh, uh, he prohibited people from going to the masajid if they smell of onions or garlics. So what about those that smell of smoke? So we need to think about these things. And brothers and sisters, finally I'd like to also say that many a times smoking can be a ladder onto other things, a stepping stone onto other things. Some people will begin by smoking and they will move on to other things. Maybe it's drinking or maybe smoking other types of drugs and these kind of things. So we need to be aware of the dangers of shaitan. He will say to you, oh, it's only makro, it's not haram. But then you end up committing other sins. So brothers and sisters, please, let's be very careful uh, of the dangers uh, of smoking and not fall into these traps. Uh, brothers and sisters, I would like to also uh, remind you all of some of our live programs. Tonight we do have Huda tonight 
And on this program, we have segment number one with Brother Ali Coleman. He will be bringing to you some of the latest news items from across the world. And in segment number two, we will be continuing our journey through history where we're going to be looking at the life of Jesus, Isa a. And this can be a very interesting program. We're going to look at it from a historical perspective. And at the same time, what do the Jews think of Jesus? What do the Christians think of Jesus? And what do we as Muslims, as those who take the middle path, uh, think and believe in Jesus so do stay tuned for segment number two and in segment number three brothers and sisters we will be having a look at a very important so a very interesting subject actually and it is the wish of Omar we'll talk about it in more detail in Huda tonight uh, in, in brief Omar he made a wish and he hoped for men to behave like men so we're going to be talking about manhood in Islam how does Islam define a real man and these, this is really important in our uh, day and age for us to understand, for a man to realize what is his role, what are his responsibilities, and what makes him a successful, a good Muslim man. So we're going to be looking at that in segment uh, number three. Brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of the program, but before I go, I must give you the question of the week. So our question for this week, inshallah ta'ala, has been selected very carefully, and it is as follows. Why is Uthman anhu, called the Nurain? Okay, so why is Uthman anhu, why is he given the name the uh, Nurain? So, brothers and sisters, that's the question of the week, and I want you to think deep and hard. I think it's relatively easy. What do you think? I think it's easy, right? So we'll see. Our Facebook uh, 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 is open. You can see us there on Viewers Pulse Official. And we will take all your answers just like we did in the previous week. So please do give us your answers and we will put up the names from the last week. Brothers and sisters, it's been a fantastic hour. We've had a look at upcoming programs, had a look at three fantastic reports. And we had uh, a discussion on some of our live programs. So we have come to the end of our program today and I thank you very much all for tuning in and all for remaining patient with the channel and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and to accept it from you all. So until next week, at the same time, at the same place, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll talk about Huda, we'll talk about our way, come join us and have your say, let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone, Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda, we'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say, let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone, Huda is the light in your home.